the True North Strong tattoo book. This is a massive tattoo encyclopedia of Canadian tattooers. 350 pages. It's an 11 by 17 coffee table format. Sean and Dan worked tirelessly to get this thing out. And sadly, it never made it to print. So it's available for free download at theholdfastsocialclub.com and championtattoo.ca. Social Club, I want to do a quick run through of some new features we have on the platform. So if you created a profile, uh, you can access the entire website. Uh, it's free. Join up now, holdfastsocialclub.com. The first thing you can do if you're in a studio, you can search for artists. So maybe you come on here looking for a bunch of artists. Oh my God, there's so many. Who can we look at? Uh, we'll go to see one of my friends here. Sean Headley, he's great. So the new features on the page. First thing you'll see is a portfolio. So you can obviously click on and get a closer look at people's work. You can connect with this artist. So if you want to direct message them because you like them, you can. That goes directly to their email via the site. A little heart up here. You can click on and off this and this goes to your favorites list. So you can save a bunch of favorites in one place so you don't have to find them again. Uh, reputation, this is the big thing here. You can vouch for each other. So here you'll see that uh, Lady Luck Tattoo has vouched for Sean's reputation. Says he's a really good guy, tells you what he's like. Uh, and what this allows for is uh, establishing a reputation on the site and you can see who their associates are. So you can vouch for anybody as a member. Uh, just remember that your name is tied to them. So only vouch for people that uh, you think are good people. They could come back and bite you. So as you scroll down a little further, uh, you'll see a lot more details that'll be helpful if you're looking to hire somebody. You want to know what their expectations are and what they bring to the table. You'll find their apprenticeship details, the experience they wish to have, current studio they work at, the art styles they work in, uh, musical taste, uh, and what they bring, the years of experience, hourly and percentage expectations, local accreditations, and equipment they might require for a guest spot or a full-time gig. So that makes things really easy. Now, artists, when you're looking for a studio, you can do that geographically, which is fantastic. You can be like, oh, I want to work in California or Nova Scotia or Vancouver and search that way. There's also lots of filters that allow you to filter through the different studios. Uh, and there's a long list of studios on here. Let's find one that uh, I know has a review on it because that's always more interesting. Here we go. Morningstar. This is Adam Skye's Tattoo Studio down in San Francisco. It's got pictures of the studio. He's done a really good job of prevent, presenting what his studio looks like. You'll find that he's got a website and Instagram account you can click on. Again, connect directly to the studio via the site. There'll be a little bio, tells you a little bit about what it's like. Uh, reputation. Uh, so this is the same as on the artist site. You can leave, you can vouch for somebody by leaving a review on their site. Uh, your name is always attached to it. So everybody knows who you're vouching for and who vouched for this person. Uh, down below, uh, this you will find the section that has everything that you want to know about a studio, what their expectations are, what they offer, maybe who works in the studio, what they're looking for full-time or guest artists or part-time, musical taste, uh, clientele description, affluent middle class, that sounds like a nice thing, typical clientele, custom, and destination. Also, the local area. It's really important that you uh, advertise the local area your shop's in to give potential artists and matches an idea of what they'd be walking into. And then this is great. This is what they'll provide. And you'll have a workload expectation, shop amenities, payment structure, shop rate. Uh, and it, this is great. He included a picture of your workstation and also uh, what you'll find there. Accommodations, this is a section that Adam doesn't have filled out, but if you had accommodations to offer a guest artist or an Airbnb close by or hotels, you could include that as well. Uh, again, you can click on favorites and your favorites will end up here in the my favorites list. It's really great. Uh, the other things that you'll find on the site are the tattoo podcast, which is the, so you're kind of a big deal tattoo podcast hosted by Sean Headley and myself. Uh, it has links directly to Spotify, Apple, and YouTube. It's great. Check it out. Uh, the newest thing that we've also added is the True North Strong Tattoo Book put out by Sean Headley and Dan Elkin. Sadly, it never made it to print, so we're offering it free here on the site. It's 350 pages of content of tattooing. It's incredible. Interviews, uh, paintings, flash, 
tattoos. It's you got to check it out. It's an 11 by 17 format. It's massive. You can download that for free at Hold Fast Social Club uh, or Champion Tattoo. Uh, that's about it. So please check it out. The newest features uh, allow you to vouch for each other, uh, direct connect, and have favorites. And we have new features coming uh, as soon as next month. So sign up. It's free. Tell your friends. The Hold Fast Social Club presents So You're Kind of a Big Deal with your hosts. Sean Headley is Dave Allen. Welcome to So You're Kind of a Big Deal, a weekly podcast deep diving into the lives of emerging and established tattoo artists. Listen in as we dig into origin stories, industry hot topics, and what it takes to survive in the world of tattooing. This is Tattoo Shop Talk. It's funny, it's crass, inspiring. And sometimes we get it right. Join your hosts, Sean Headley and Dave Allen, every week as we host a new guest. Get nice and close, boys. Here, I'll move this back. Boy. Oh, my God. Oh, quiet. No, she will just move us back. I, uh, I remember you su- suggesting this time, but when I look through my messages, it says 1130. <laughs> well, that sucks. <laughs> uh, whatever. It's not live. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is true. Kevin, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. It's nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. We've actually met a couple of times. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we met in when I was tattooing in Vernon still. Okay. And then uh, Calgary convention like once, I think. Oh, man. Yeah. My memory just is not what it used to be. Oh, that's I don't know okay. if I've never had a good one, to be honest. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can we're, hear us okay? Converted. What's that? We're, so we're you can hear us okay? It could be better if the micro, you guys are closer to the mic. But. Move in closer. You move in closer. Just like put your chair in front of that and oh, okay. move in beside it. Oh, you got it. Nice. Yeah. You guys that better? put your arms around each other and just have like a real nice intimate time there. <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't awkward at all. <laughs> I'm all sweaty now, even. Oh, fuck. This is oh, why he comes work here every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> the hot shop. Yeah. Uh, where were you working in Vernon? I worked at Genesis with Rob. Oh, fuck yeah. That's yeah, that's where I apprenticed. Yeah. Oh, crazy. Yeah. Was that in the, the big shop uh, on the main drag day? I started um, when they moved back the to the house. little White House. Oh, yeah, on the yeah. corner and then from there we moved to the big shop yeah across from where five fathoms was in the two-story place yeah i remember that yeah oh that's crazy yeah those are the man when there were no tattoo shops in vernon totally there was like us there was five fathoms uh fat baby and that might have been died. it did you hear that i did hear that yeah i just it's probably years ago now i just found out this year but yeah, it's kind of the same, actually. I didn't know him really at all. I don't know if I even met him that many times, but um, his wife ended up working with my wife at the Bay a long time ago. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, yeah, we heard he passed. Nice. Yeah. The Bay, the place to get all your casual clothes and long Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was Vernon, right? It was like the only, the only kind of nice store that was there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. Awesome. So what are you two knuckleheads up to this morning? Uh, waiting for you. Waiting for me. Yeah, yeah that's it. Nothing. Uh, this and then tattooing. Nice. Yeah. Because it's cool. early. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been... thanks for coming on. So you're kind of a big deal. Hey, <laughs> thanks for having me. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> You want to start now? We're started. Oh, we've been recording, recording this whole okay, time. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, my name's Kevin Pregitzer. I work in Calgary, Alberta. I own a shop called Homestead Tattoo with my wife Sarah. Yeah. So that's how you pronounce your last name. Yep, just like it's spelled. <laughs> <laughs> I just awesome. pretzel getter. Pretzel getter. That's a good one. Pretzel getter. Prego is a good one. <laughs> Pregitzer. 
<laughs> yeah. Kevin works. <laughs> yeah, or just Kevin. That's fine too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyone who hasn't seen Kevin's work, it's impressive, man. Some large scale Japanese stuff you do is. It's, uh, I love it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, your backgrounds are really, really cool. They remind me a lot of uh, uh, older Horiyoshi two stuff and Gifu, yeah, yeah, Horiyoshi uh, from Gifu. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely back into something I try and pay a lot of attention to. Like, I never wanted it to look like an afterthought. I always try and really pond it out and have it make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the way. I yeah. That's what I've read about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been tattooing now? It's coming up like almost 19 years. So I started in 04. At Genesis uh, with Rob Forrest and I worked there for five years I moved to Calgary and I worked at Immaculate with Steve Peace I was there for five years and then I moved to Kensho and I was there with Rick Wilson and I was there like seven years and then my own place we're coming up on a year now crazy yeah. awesome yeah well, that's cool. cool yeah and then I'm lucky he, gets, he comes up here a few times a year to just be like yeah Look at all my work. Fuck you guys. <laughs> I like coming out here. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> no, I love it. I love having you come up. It's Thanks. super fun. Yeah, yeah. And the guys like it. Edmonton's been good to me. Um, I have a good client base here now. People are rad. Like, you guys are super fun to work with. Clients are really into getting tattooed here. So, yeah, yeah it's been good. Yeah. yeah. That's, uh, well, that's why that Anton guy, the French guy, he came here too. Same thing from... Yeah tattooing in calgary he's like yeah he's like i just have more clients from edmonton coming down so he's like came up here instead and so totally. i'm well and stuff, i have people so. go back and forth like they'll come down and continue work and stuff so yeah that's been great nice yeah. nice. Cool. nice well let's dig in let's uh you've mentioned you worked uh with rob at genesis yeah i'd love to hear about that because i i did visit that shop frequently at the it was a different kind of tattoo shop from my my experience yeah and it was my only experience at the time. So um, it was interesting, I guess, like looking back on it, it was somewhat isolated, like my apprenticeship. It was just Rob and his wife and me, and that was it. So um, yeah, I just learned everything from them. I like made needles, but only certain groupings. Like uh, he was, I started tattooing with single needle liners and like three flats. <laughs> three, three flats, flats? yeah <laughs> yeah i yeah. spent many hours he making just did like flats. really small black and gray stuff didn't he he did large work too but it was really the biggest needle would be like a six flat like a back piece with a six flat yeah i've got a client right now yeah. that rob did his uh did his back and he's a big dude i can't imagine doing that all with a six flat yeah it was crazy and when we got like towards the end of my time there, he bought some 13 mags and it was like, whoa, this is huge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. is that like a traditional apprenticeship then? You're making needles in the back and you're... Totally you're breathing in all that area. flux and uh, no ventilation. You know, why am I sneezing all the time? <laughs> yeah. Fuck your lungs. <laughs> yeah. I even learned how to make... Uh, we made our own tubes. Oh, shit. So we got like stainless steel tubing and cut it at an angle and then bought those yeah. tips from Spalding and like soldered them on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Rob was definitely a uh, generation before Sean and I, he, he would have yeah. learned mm -hmm. from yeah. the older generation where they were much more reliant on making their own stuff. Totally. It was super untrusting of like packaged stuff. Like, Oh, I don't know where that comes from. Like, yeah. 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 I had re-tipped a lot of my early tubes and stuff like that, but yeah, not like, hand banging like stainless tubes and so like, like cutting it and cutting filing it stuff and yeah. yeah no re-tipping i did yeah. that stuff but man and i did it that like, the first couple times too well from making your own tubes and then make your own needles occasionally you'd get a tube that was like that and a needle that was like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 just put a little bend in that bar it's good. yeah <laughs> like <laughs> <a curve. laughs> yeah it's like oh. an S bar. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> oh, uh, now yeah, it's I like can... I go to like, because I'm so used to like pressing down on like mags. It's just out of habit. You know, you press yeah. it on the needles. And if I use a cartridge one day, I'm just like, I... 
Sometimes they're still a little more spread out than I like, so I'll stick it out. And, like, yeah. Squish it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucks to have, you have to take the cartridge out of the fucking machine to take a look at the needles. Like if yeah. Like paper towel clogged in there and shit. Like, oh, yeah. oh, totally. Man, I actually cool. still buy needles on the bar for that purpose. I stir ink with the one end, and then I'll use the other the needle part to scrape out paper towel. Oh my god, you're smart. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta make an just, order right now. <laughs> yeah, I just buy the cheapest on bar needles I can. Yeah, just yeah. yeah, you should just like order like those fucking Beyond or whatever from worldwide. Yeah, single needle as long as they're sterile. Yeah, yeah. Just, like, <laughs> stir my gray wash and pick out paper towels. Oh, fuck, I got a box of singles. Who the fuck am I kidding? I'm not going to use those. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't imagine lining with a single now. The fact that I even did it before is crazy. Have you I'm seen sure a lot of those lines He'll look do... great. <laughs> He'll do single needle work all at the end of the tattoo. I watched him tattoo uh, Dustin's armpit at uh, the Montreal Convention. Did the whole tattoo. Comes in right at the end with a single needle to add all the little details over all that stuff. It was... <laughs> Uh, that sounds off. That? Kurt Wisco on Dustin. Oh yeah, worse. Okay, I was yeah. thinking. I was like, wait, somebody did that to Rob Job. Yeah, Kurt Wisco. <laughs> yeah. And poor Dustin. The, like the day, the morning of, he had a total anxiety attack over getting tattooed at the convention by Kurt because he knew what he was in for. It it took him probably three hours to get up the courage to walk into that convention hall and finally get tattooed. It was, <laughs> what a rough go for that kid. Oh. Yeah. yeah. God damn. In the armpit too, right? Yeah. So how long was your apprenticeship before they started kind of getting you on actual tattooing? Like kind of what was it? Uh, I don't remember. I might have been tattooing within three months or so. So there was a lot of drawing, making needles, and then all the cleaning. Um, and then the, all the apprenticeship all together was like six months. But then I only worked part time at the shop for the first two years. There wasn't space for me, so I worked like, I think Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then the other four days a week I had another job somewhere else. Okay. So I did stucco for a bit, and I uh, worked in kitchens. <laughs> but I kind of worked seven days a week for the first year and a half, two years, uh, getting tattooing going. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That shop was. Uh, it was a house. Yeah. But it wasn't. It. I remember just having it was cut up into tons of little spaces, like it wasn't super. Yeah, like you, there was a reception area. Then you walked around. There was like sterilization, the autoclave, and then like three rooms. There was like yeah. Rob's room, his wife Jeanette's room, and then like what right. was a lunch room that I kind of converted into my room. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 You I took me to that. Excited. You took me to that shop, Dave. We went there yeah, yeah. to to give him some of your liquid spray that you had made by, I think, a dentist. I remember you, that stuff. I used oh, that stuff. Fuck, I, I forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That stuff was awesome. Yeah, yeah. you were like, you got to come meet this guy Rob over at Genesis. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it took me over, walked over, and yeah. I used that spray on my forearm, actually. Nothing. Your arm's still there? Still oh, there. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was a... He was a dentist. <laughs> that made. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if he was still doing the teeth work. I don't know. <laughs> uh, just selling lidocaine on the side. Yeah, yeah. Here's a bottle of liquid lidocaine. Yeah. Way above the. Left <laughs> exactly. <arm>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember I couldn't. We did the outline and then like sprayed it on to try it out. And he couldn't feel anything. And then all of a sudden, it would feel horrendous. He'd spray a little more on. And then on the way home, as it all started to wear off, I felt like I wanted to cut my arm off. It hurt so bad. Who tattooed <laughs> you? Uh, well, Rob did it. We, we did like six hours or something. Oh, my but God. With, between the spray and the tattooing and the spray and the tattooing, I think just like not feeling it and having it, all the sensation come back, it just hurt so bad. Yeah. That's what I've said before with like some numbing creams, man. They just stop working and you feel all of it at once. And for some people, that's just a bit too much. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. You, often the people that are using numbing cream have problems with managing the pain anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So then you amplify that by 10 when it all comes on at once and they're just, they're fucked. The session's over. It's like done. Can't even touch yeah. them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> 
So what kind of stuff oh, were you man. doing at first? Because I'm guess it wasn't really a flash shop. Uh, no, it wasn't really a flash shop. Just kind of everything, walk-ins, like, you know, names, writings, dolphins, tribal, all this stuff. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of into more new school stuff at the time, so that's kind of what I was drawing. Um, yeah, just anything that came in. Yeah. yeah, Vernon was Vernon wasn't exactly on the forefront of tattooing. <laughs> no, <laughs> so we were still getting like Tasmanian Devil and Bugs Bunny yeah. and like dolphins with water, like all that yeah. shit. Blue yeah. water, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah the dolphin. I don't know about on. yeah. I don't know about Rob's clientele, but I know Dustin's clientele. Um, when we were working at Vernon, it was all coming from Kelowna. Was that the same thing? Kind of. We got a lot of the surrounding areas. So there's like Kelowna, Cherryville, all those little towns that you know didn't have shops. Kelowna only had two shops for a while. And <laughs> so, um, I yeah, we were in you, Vernon. <laughs> yeah. 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 We weren't allowed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. A lot from Kelowna and around. Yeah. yeah Vernon yeah. was funny, right? Like you probably get this in, you're in Kelowna now, right? Yeah. 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 You get a lot of like summertime beach bums that come into your shop like bright red and like I want a tattoo and you're like uh not right now man. <laughs> totally. Most we're se semi private. We don't get the walk-ins, but my clients can't seem to put sunscreen on at all. Spend the day at the beach and then like want to get tattooed. Yeah, I've pretty much been saying for years I just want to take August off because everyone's so fucking tanned. It's just impossible to tattoo people. I'm yeah. closing the shop for two two weeks in August this year. I've been oh, yeah. saying it for oh. years, and this I told the guys, if you guys want to work, fine, but the shop is closed these two weeks. So if you want to work, that's great, but don't think you're taking two weeks off later. <laughs> <laughs> this is your two weeks. <laughs> this is the two. We've all decided that August, it's like some are going to take the first two weeks off. Some are going to take the second two weeks off, which is totally fine. But like, yeah, it just... Fuck it, it's just so quiet, man. Mm. Like, yeah, it's yeah, prime summer. Away. People got their trailers out, their boats out, everything else is out, and it's just yeah. It's yeah everyone great. out here is trailers and boats, right? Yeah, they all take off. Yeah. yeah, you know, it's all the all the blue collar workers and stuff enjoying their summer, and kids are out of school, etc. And stuff, and yeah. yeah. And then there's you know, how many fucking long weekends now do we have? Like between now and school. Yeah, several. Right. So. Yeah. It's like, like if these fires keep up that you guys are getting, you might not. Uh, you might want to stay open August. People might be at home. It's true. That is yeah. true. Also, so yeah, we'll yeah. play it by ear, right? Like, yeah. <clears throat> I'm going to be away for like uh, ten days. I think we're doing. So we're going to be driving to Kelowna and then to the island. So I'm going to be gone for two weeks, right? Nice. So Alice doesn't work. Uh, she only works. Two weeks out of the month so it's like there's two of us is already out of the shop for two weeks so we'll see how it goes yeah yeah we'll play it by ear you know greg reapplied for the military so we'll see how that goes awesome <laughs> <laughs> tattooers are weird man <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah the one guy starts working for me full time just every day large scale black and gray realism shit and then all of a sudden one day he's like uh yeah so i'm starting my job as a peace officer next week and i'm like what He's like, all of a sudden, he got it in his head that he needs to have a job that has a pension. It's like, okay, yeah. So, oh, well. yeah, enjoy your job out in oh. the wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you left, where did you go when you left Vernon? Uh, to Immaculate Concept with Steve. Okay, that's in Calgary. Yeah. So you went directly right from Genesis. Did you do a guest spot or anything? How did you meet? No, Steve? I actually, I emailed a bunch of shops when I, I knew I was going to move to Calgary and I emailed a bunch of people, see if I could line up some interviews or just stop by. And, uh, Steve got back to me and, uh, I went in, met him, saw the shop and he offered me a job there. Um, and I accepted and that was that went back to Vernon and I worked for a few months. Um, and then we moved in like, uh, the summertime, like August, I think, July, August. Oh, nice. And yeah. Immaculate, was it at the two level on 17th Ave? When you yeah, were we were just the top level at the time. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, same location it is now, 17th okay. Ave. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And who were you working with there? 
There was uh, Steve, Adam Catherine's, Yanni, and Josie. They were a couple from Montreal. Uh, and Lee Robertson. Okay. And then more people started coming after that. And then they expanded, moved to like, they took over the floor underneath them. And then by the time I left, there was like 14 artists there. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Even Fenric was there for a bit. Yeah. He was there before me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, all right. Is this when you started get delving into Japanese stuff? You were doing new school? You a little bit and... more. I was still kind of taking on everything. Um, a little bit more in Japanese and focusing more on like that kind of thing. Um, but I really didn't focus a hundred percent on wanting to do Japanese until I got to Kensho. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I knew I was going in that direction and then found out Rick was opening up a shop and, uh, asked if he would hire me. Yeah. Figured he'd be good to learn from. What kind of mindset were you into? to focus on one type of tattooing. Like you, you obviously you spent probably 10 years of your career doing walk-ins and taking yeah. whatever came in and trying all different types of stuff. What led you to just focusing on one thing, specifically Japanese too? Yeah, uh, well, Japanese just is so complex that I felt it deserved a certain amount of focus and dedication to figure all that stuff out. And then also developing a style that people would seek you out for just having so many tattooers in Calgary alone and so many good tattooers, like there's no shortage of really talented no. people. Yeah. So yeah. having a reason for people to, to look for you or travel to come see you, I thought would be important in the future. Yeah. And really though, just the complexity of Japanese, like it takes so much effort to search through and read all the stuff that you need to. Yeah, definitely putting yeah. together stuff like just, slapping shit together works for some people yeah. but you know if if you don't want to work that way like yeah. if your brain won't allow you and you want to know more stuff man you'll be immersed in that shit for ever mm -hmm. and the more you learn the more you realize you don't know so then it's just you keep going and going yeah 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 and how did you find a direction within that genre i mean it's pretty diverse and most of us mm -hmm. in the west we do a more of a biker japanese <laughs> yeah like a hybrid that's bastardized, but yours is very traditional. Yeah, I always liked the more looser kind of stuff, like Horiyoshi 2, Horihide was one of my favorites. Um, and I always liked when you could look at someone's tattoo and you could see where their reference was from, but it was still very much their own tattoo. Um, so that's what I've tried to lean towards. Okay, cool. Yeah. What's it like working with Rick? I hear he's, I hear he's a... Uh, a bad dude. I hear he's just <laughs> all day long. So aggressive all the time, just <laughs> yeah. like constant yelling what and do you throwing things. A guy in that the wears shop? white socks and flip flops. Yeah. <laughs> That's a tattoo shop disaster right there. <laughs> uh, there is some white socks and oh, slides. They're not flip flops. Oh, that's slides. right. Sorry, slides. Yeah, yeah, white socks and slides. It was good. He's really dedicated to Japanese. I learned a ton working there. Um, He's super easy going. Like it was really easy to work yeah. there. Stu was in there. Um, There's some really great people that came through. Like Ryan Garney worked there for a while. Mike Welchman. Uh, who else? There's more. I think I can't remember right now. Yeah, I can't even think. Actually, yeah, Rick's, I, I just when I hear Ken Show, I just think of Rick, and then yeah. I, I I totally forgot that Stu was there for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Rick's got a great approach to the Japanese form. I Every time mm -hmm. I see something, it just looks so solid and well thought out. Totally. And you can really pick his work out, I find. Yeah. Like every time I, and if I see a sleeve, like I know it's his. Yeah. 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 And more so now. Yeah. Like when I'm scrolling, it's like, oh, back. And it's like, he's really dialing in that really busy, layered Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. Now, was there a lot of, a lot of collaborative efforts there did you guys sit down and draw together uh we would do yeah some drawing together there was a lot of asking like what do you think of this should this be here like um advice on you know some of the mythology like should this go together that kind of thing and yeah we would do paint nights and stuff like that too yeah that's gotta be <clears throat> i find that's always 
really important to progressing and learning just to get those little bits of information. Mm -hmm. So easy to get overwhelmed online and try to mimic somebody. But I think when you're drawing and painting side by side, you just pick up littler bits and stuff mm -hmm. settles in and it's more natural. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was good working there. I was there for like seven years. So yeah, it was, it was a good time. Yeah. yeah. You've got a lot of longevity. You stay at shops for a long time. You must be a really uh, easygoing guy. I'd like to think so. He's yeah. <laughs> he's very easy going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I try not to get too bothered by much stuff. Yeah. 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 No, if I can help it. Enough that when I wasn't even at the shop, he was gonna. He's like, "Hey, can I still go up and guest spot?" I'm like, "Of course." Mailed him keys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mailed him the biggest Edmonton Oiler key and Oiler keychain I could find. <laughs> it was a Minions key. Oh, Minions! That's right. <laughs> I wanted Oilers, and then yeah. I could, so I have Minions. The obnoxious Oilers keychain, though, was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Super easy going. Like, all the guys here just love it when he comes up and stuff. And, you know, yeah. everybody here is pretty quiet and easy going, too. So that's pretty mm -hmm. good. Like, yeah, everyone's pretty easy to get along with, I yeah. find. Yeah. More and more, all you guys start switching to fucking pens. I don't even know there's anything happening here because nobody's talking. <laughs> The music's on so low, yeah. it's like, what is going on? Absolutely. <laughs> Do I want to massage Because there's an around? overbearing owner in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> overbearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, here comes Sean. Doing? Here comes Sean. Don't look busy. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's more like, don't make eye contact. They're all cowering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So transitioning yeah, so, um, to your own place. Out. What? Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so transitioning out into your own place. How's that been? It's been awesome. Uh, I love it. Every day you come in and your shop looks exactly how you want it to. Uh, that's pretty hard to beat. There's no pile of it crap is. by like the stencil maker. You know? <laughs> we own a proper stencil maker. <laughs> I bought a real photocopier. What's proper? What's proper? <laughs> one, one, one that works. <laughs> I was gonna say you can make stencils that are bigger than this machine. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it? Hand bomb them. Uh -oh. Yeah, true. Uh, no, it's been great. Uh, it's super quiet. I mean, the shop's very mellow. I have people. I have clients fall asleep there. Like once a week, someone falls asleep while getting tattooed. You must be light-handed. Uh, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> it's is it a private studio? Is it? Uh... Yeah, just my wife and I, and she doesn't work every day, um, so usually it's just myself and the client. Oh, nice! And your wife yeah. tattoos as well. She does like uh, cosmetic stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then she's nice. getting into like doing some smaller tattoos as well. That's the new apprenticeship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start with eyebrows, well, and then you have all the confidence in the world to tattoo people, right? <laughs> really. uh, we were talking about that last night, actually. How yeah. he was like, she shows me eyebrows, and it just gives me anxiety. It's like hundred <laughs> percent. Anything with the face freaks me out. She like talks yeah. about mapping it out and stuff. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Um. Yeah, she's starting mostly cosmetic stuff, and then she does want to do some smaller, like, fine line stuff. Um, that's been interesting to kind of navigate because of how much to show her, like, how much of an apprenticeship does she need, like, where to even go with that, and then trying to remember what my apprenticeship was like to share that with her because it was so long ago, and I've never apprenticed anyone, so that's been interesting. Oh, I bet. Yeah. You probably have to re-examine everything you do and think about it a little deeper to explain it properly. You can't just yeah. say, well, you just move your hand like this. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's all I tell Derek. <laughs> just do this. Yeah. Yeah. But she's been with you from the beginning, right? Like she yep. was with you were with her when you started your apprenticeship? We started dating. Uh, like I met her two weeks before I started my apprenticeship. Oh, wow. Together the whole time. Well, we, we broke yeah. up. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. More or less, we've been yeah, yeah. together the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Most relationships won't make it through an apprenticeship. Yeah. I yeah. guess. 
Yeah, lots, yeah. right? Well, uh, depending on the apprenticeship, right? Like a lot of apprenticeships, if you're really trying to become a tattooer, take up a lot of time, mm -hmm. right? And like you said, you actually worked another job. So yeah. on top of tattooing and drawing and all that stuff, you actually had another job. That's a little mm -hmm. fucking time to not be putting into a relationship. So totally. for it to come out the other side, it's pretty great. Yeah. So yeah, teach her how to tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. He's uh, super easy going to Like we're both really mellow. Like uh, I think that's what makes it work because we're just, you know, easy going. You do your thing. I'll do mine. We'll come together. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I, I'm curious about your inspirations for Japanese tattooing, where you get your mm -hmm. reference from and what you look to for your own inspiration. I reference like a lot. I try and look at prints first. So a lot of Yukioe. Um, and then what's that? Do you have a favorite? Yeah, I was just trying to think of the name. Um, Kunichika oh, is a yeah. favorite. Amazing. Yeah, Kuniyoshi. Yeah, and the backgrounds. Yeah. Like, that's where a lot of those tattoo backgrounds came from. Um, and then Hokusai, of course. Like, all that Hokusai manga is great. Um, Yoshitoshi and Kuniyoshi are good ones, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, the, the Kunijika stuff I discovered late in my career, but I, I just can't get enough of it. Same, yeah. I didn't know about him for a while. It was through Rick, actually, that okay. uh, I found it. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to. So you. It. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you a link. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll send you a book. Um, so you you reference prints first, and then where do you go from there? Some like sometimes older tattoos as well, like favorites that I have, like uh, Horihide. And those guys just to see how things are sort of put together um but then obviously trying to do my own thing with it like i'm never trying to directly copy anybody even with the prints i like to get a few different versions and uh try and create my own version of those okay yeah depends yeah, on the you... character that you're doing when you're yeah, drawing something out you draws a lot yeah well, yeah, he just, I, he comes up the other day and he does a back piece. He did like six thumbnails. I did a bunch of thumbnails and then a bunch of eight by tens. And then I did the larger version, uh, like the full size version. And then, and when then he freehanded it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that just answered. Because of my shitty answer. stencil maker. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> That just answered my question. I was going to say, how much do you uh, prepare for the tattoo? Do you draw just the subject matter and draw on the background? Do you do, do you map it all out at one time? Uh, sometimes I'll stencil the subject matter and draw on the background, um, or I'll stencil all of it. I would like to get into more drawing all of it if I can. I feel like there's a certain like looseness that you get from drawing it on that you just it's really hard to replicate if you're using a stencil. Um, and I just really like how that looks. Um, but yeah, thumbnails first, like tiny drawings. I'll usually do at least three or four for a sleeve and then maybe one bigger one and then draw like the full size one. Okay. Just to work out any of those ideas. I find if you jump right into the full size drawing and like you screw something up, it just takes so long. Yeah. You map it all out on a tiny thing. It's easier for me. Yeah, I think iPads were great for a lot of tattooers because it forced them into drawing thumbnails. Yeah. You know, it's just, <laughs> you can't draw a full size. I kind of, I quit drawing on my iPad too. I found that helped. Yeah, I suck on drawing on the iPad. I just, I didn't find it that much time saving. Like by the time you blew it up, the background was fucked. It was like, yeah, your I, cherry I, blossoms were like this big. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I always ruin the composition yeah. well, every fucking time. I don't know. How, other people can do it. I just, totally. I can't like not at all. So. There's really good tattooers that use an iPad for everything. And I just don't, yeah. it doesn't work for me. No, I've recently just switched to a, back to a hybrid format where I sketch it out, the thumbnails on the iPad. And when I have a thumbnail, I like, I blow that up and then render my line drawing off of that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. It saves a bit of time just because you can erase stuff so quickly and you can 
you like something from one thumbnail, you can move it over to the other one. And, yeah, totally. But, uh, yeah, drawing on paper again is great. Yeah. I started drawing on paper and I found these Pentel signed brush markers. So oh. I've been drawing all with those too. So I'll start with like yellow, orange, red, just like you would with the pencil crayons. Pentel, where did you get those from? Like Opus or? Most art stores will have them. Okay, I gotta look. And they have like a softer brush tip, but it's a little firmer than those really long brush tip markers. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I found the repetition of like, if I screw something up, just starting over again, uh, helped my drawing. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah that's me. Our town here doesn't carry any of the shit that we use for drawing for tattooing anymore because everybody draws on a tablet. So the oh, really? tattoo section at the art shop that used to be huge is fucking gone. I like guess it's just not there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> there was that really <laughs> good art store. Can't buy them. Oh, no way. Yeah, they had one color. One color, like, what's yeah. the point of even carrying them? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's the ones that didn't sell 10 years ago, right? Yeah. <laughs> they still had stock. Like, oh, let's try and get rid of these. Yeah, now yeah, you so, just got to fucking the Sayers.com or whatever. Fucking get everything online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. Have you been to Japan? Yeah. Have you done anything? I haven't. I haven't traveled you much. Know. Um, I do. That's definitely top of the list of places to go. Um, I would like to even guess spot there. There's a few shops that I'd heard of that like bringing in people like from the West to come guess spot. Mm -hmm. So that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I I think they still do a convention there in Tokyo, no? I think so. That convention. Yeah. It would be. It, it makes me nervous just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So speaking of guest spots, um, where was your first guest spot? Five fathoms, uh, like just when, across the street. No, uh, <laughs> it was. Hey, Rob, I'm just no. <laughs> I just got, yeah. After lunch, I'll be working with Dustin. <laughs> yeah, no, I, unfortunately, Dustin wasn't there anymore. It was. Uh, I was at Kencho, and Nick had the has the shop now. It was yeah. when they were on the main drag there. Uh, I did a uh, yeah, a few days there. Okay, and oh, then cool. I think my next one might have just been here. Really? Yeah. Oh, so not many guest spots at all. No. I'd like to do more, though. What about conventions? Conventions, I've done Calgary, Edmonton, Kelowna, Saskatoon, Montreal, and Switzerland. And I'm going to do Toronto this year. Oh, nice. Cool. Have you been I've never Toronto? been to Toronto before, so that's exciting. Fun city. Yeah, that's what I heard. If, do you have any dietary restrictions? I, I don't. Not anymore? Yeah. You want to go to <laughs> Bar Raval? Bar Raval. It's a, it's a Spanish tapas joint. It's got the best interior you'll ever see in the foods out of this world. Right on. I'll remember yeah, that for sure. Point. Thank you. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Me and my friend John Roberts are gonna go. We split a booth, so we'll have to check that out. Are you doing any other conventions? Uh, not well. Other than Calgary, not this year. No. Hopefully, twenty twenty four. I'll do more. Okay. Yeah. Any more guest spots lined up? You're gonna come back to Champion. Uh, this is it, uh, really planned out for the next little while, but uh, I would definitely like to do more, travel a little more, do some guest spots. I'd like to guest spot and like um, bring my family to some, like do Montreal and bring my wife and son. That'd be cool. Yeah. I think that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah, I've seen a lot of tattooers in the past have done that, bring their families. I think it's a great city for that. Yeah. yeah. Especially now that the kid's older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's he 16. So. It. He would remember it and they could bum around while I'm working and we'll meet up at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Top five tattooers? Uh, in no particular order Santu Horisada, <laughs> uh, Hori Kashi, Andy Canino, Ryuchiro, and. He came prepared. This is amazing. He texted me I, last I, night. <laughs> he texted me last night. I got my top five. Oh, <laughs> Hori Hanna. Who's that? He's from Brazil. Okay. Yeah. He, if you guys find his Instagram, he looks like he walked out of 1986 and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I will find that. Yeah. Right and he posts these tattoo photos and they look like something you'd find in a magazine in the early 90s. It's fucking great. His shop, he has like a bar attached to it called Kieran Tattoo Club. 
Oh, and I, uh, I think I followed that. Ori, how do you spell it? I know the first yeah, part. H O R A I H A N N A, I think. Rihanna comes up first. I was going to say, a lot of Rihanna comes up. Try just one, a, one N. There we go. Hey, there you go. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I love his I stuff a lot. The photos all look like they're taken on film, too. Totally. <laughs> That's rad. Oh, yeah. I have one yeah, of this guy. Looks, looks straight out of the <laughs> 50s totally like the, the style yeah that's the kind of stuff i really enjoy like super loose um lots of background i'm pretty sure he's drawing everything on as well yeah i actually i have this guy's book he released like a book like this big just like thin like full printed fold over of just like yep. back pieces mm -hmm. oh. yeah and then oh, Santu horisada is a favorite too he's from buenos aires i think yeah that Brazilian, uh, South American, Japanese influences is interesting. Yeah, like it's kind of become its own it. thing. Like it's very unique. Yeah, well, there's a large Japanese influx of um, immigrants into Brazil and South America. God, I can't remember the decade now, but um, it was between 1930 and 1986. Forty thousand migrants actually hmm. just to the Amazons. Wow. Yeah, mm -hmm. just the Amazon specifically. They weren't allowed to really go anywhere else uh, other than like two places in the, what is it called? The Paradis or something like that, I believe it's called. I'm reading a book on jujitsu right now. And it's <laughs> oh, all, it just actually, this of chapter course. is just all on the, the Japanese migrants yeah. uh, going over there and stuff like that. And, and then they're bringing their farming and et cetera, martial arts. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that that tied into jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a <second>. yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah really honestly the only thing i talk fucking about more than jujitsu now is julia <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh shit yeah. cool awesome we're gonna get ready for work yeah All right. i'm gonna Just... go for a paddle sweet oh yeah oh yeah just training for an ultra Mm -hmm. Oh no fucking way! Yeah, I'm gonna do like an ultra a, out in Golden at Kicking Horse. The oh, Golden shit, Ultra, it's you're called. Doing like a, a trail trail ultra. What kind of elevation? Yeah, so it's do? three oh, days. First question. Well, it's three days. Uh, I think it's 85 kilometers altogether. So the first day they call it the vertical kilometer. Um, it's 5k run, and you get about a thousand meters elevation gain. You're kind of running up a ski hill at Kicking Horse. Yeah. And then the second day is like 60K with 2,500 meters elevation. And then the third day is like a mellow kind of <laughs> 21K um, with only 1,000 meters again. So kind of rolling single track stuff for the last day. Fuck. On <laughs> trails. On trails, yeah. 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 Fun. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You're you're a tougher man than I. You're obviously in better shape too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't run very fast. <laughs> Ultra running is mostly walking and eating. If it makes you feel yeah. any better, <laughs> like you walk up the big hills. Speed walking and snacking. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they call it power hiking. Power hiking. <laughs> oh my god! Power hiking, sweet. Yeah. Nice. It's like car camping is now called overlanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Good. laughs> yeah. Overlanding. Oh, nice. Sweet. Yeah. We got to come up with a new name for like us old tattooers. Huh. That Watch makes that. us seem cooler. Oh, makes us seem cooler. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. you know, car camping. No, no, bro. I overland. Yeah. All right. I yeah, I've been tattooing for 30 years. Like, oh, you seem kind of old in that. It's like, I don't know. We need to come up with something else. Arting. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I've been disappointing people for 30 years. Yeah. You know, that doesn't seem good. <laughs> How about therapist? <laughs> yeah. 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 All. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for shooting a little short pod with us, buddy. No problem. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. Appreciate your time.
It was nice. For sure. uh, Thanks for having me meeting on. Meeting you again. Yeah, it's really <laughs> such a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Typical old tattooer. Oh, he's arrogant, <laughs> self self absorbed. <laughs> no, yeah. he's always, I just always said about Scott McEwen, somebody would walk in with a tattoo and he'd be right out the gate if he didn't like it. Ugh, who did that? And I was like, dude, one day he's gonna say you. Yeah. Never, never. That's the classic like fucking guy comes in. Ugh. Gotta get that covered up. Who did that for you? You did. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. But when you ask a client if they've been tattooed before, and they're like, "Yeah, you did." Oh, that's it's the weird. Weird. It's the worst. Yeah. It's like, Show me your tattoo first. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like that's how much we sometimes pay attention to people. Yeah. Right. And like, people can be uncomfortable in the shop and stuff like that. It's like, trust me, man. We're folk. Well. Not everybody, but the majority of us, we're literally just focused on doing your tattoo the best we possibly can. Totally. The yeah. rest of shit that's going on, we don't care. 100%. Like, and I that's half the time why we don't remember you. Mm -hmm. right? so, I'll be recognized the back of your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the back of your head. Yeah. More yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So awesome. Cool, Dave. Yeah. Have a great day. All right, gentlemen. You have a great day as well. we'll Thanks. Talk soon. Talk See you later. Bye. It was great getting to know Curly and this amazing guy that tattooed with one arm. You know, the customer had to stretch his own skin. So I did get blood poisoning from him twice. Oh, twice. Yeah. <laughs> twice. <laughs>